We welcome you to Philly's Post Game Live, presented by our friends at Cure Auto Insurance. I'm Michael Barkan with Ricky Vitalico and Ben Davis. In a moment, Ruben Amaro Jr. from City Field in Queens. The long day's journey into night is complete. 11-4 Mets. Phillies now 89-72 and on the season. Road record 40 up. 40 down, three straight losses, and you might be saying, well, none of this yeah. really matters. So, Ricky Patalico, yep. give me something that you think does matter from this game. We needed some bonus points from some bullpen guys and something that made you feel good about the way, the way they were throwing the ball. I'm going to go Alvarado, Kimbrell, two innings pitch between the two of them tonight, five strikeouts, both of them scoreless, both of them hitless. I'm good with that right there because that's what I want them going into the playoffs with, a little – Added uh, yeah. incentive, a little adrenaline rush, and, and maybe some confidence that goes along with all that. Ben, can you expand upon that, something that you thought mattered? Uh, 47 and 104. That's how many home runs and RBIs that Kyle Schwerber has. He put another great swing on a baseball tonight off Quintana. You love to see that lefty-lefty matchup and Kyle Schwerber winning the best of it. Uh, not a whole lot other than that to really be excited about in this in this ball game. Plasmeyer did not pitch well. Uh, you know, he lasted just three and two thirds, gave up eight hits and nine earned runs. And um, you know, you also hope that Trey Turner is okay. Yes, yeah, in, in all honesty, game. you watch this game. The Phillies had a one, two, three inning against the Mets in the first inning. Then it went one, two, three, four, five, five innings with at least six batters every inning yeah. in those five innings for the, the Mets. And then three straight innings of one, two, three baseball. Mm -hmm. So, you know what? You pick and choose what you want to take out of this. The Phillies stunk today. Yeah. I mean, in all honesty, they didn't play very good baseball. But, I mean, w what does it really mean? It doesn't mean anything. Yeah, and it you, it's got to be tough to get up for a game that means little to nothing. Let's go up to – Flushing New York right now. Check in with Ruben Amaro Jr. in the crossover. Rube, take it any way you wish. Something that mattered tonight in the game that, that you can take from this one going forward with one more remaining in the regular season. Yeah, I think for me it was all about the guys in the bullpen. Uh, the fact that Alvarado got a nice tune-up. I thought Kimbrell threw the ball well. Hoffman threw the ball well. And, and even seeing uh, Christopher Sanchez coming out of the bullpen and throw the ball well. I mean, those guys are basically lights out. Um, and, and the fact that they uh, threw as well as they did with that the, the, the really crisp stuff, uh, I think that's a great sign. Obviously, they did not play a great baseball game here in this last game. Uh, too many errors, too many mishaps. Um, I don't like to see those. Uh, you like to see clean baseball. But, again, it, uh, I think you guys said it. It's, it's, it's tough when these games don't mean much. They almost feel like, um, I don't know, spring training games, like the last couple games of spring training before the, the real season starts. But I um, uh, saw a couple of good things. I saw uh, Wes, uh, Wes Wilson get an opportunity to do some things earlier today, and his second game wasn't a great one, but uh, but he's got some versatility. So there, there's some positives to take out of this, and uh, I think generally we just want to get these guys help be, have them be healthy when the season's over here in the last game tomorrow. Ruben, I just want to get your feel. What, what is your starting outfield come come the playoffs? Is, is Rojas the everyday starting center fielder right now? Yeah, no question for me. He's playing center field every day, uh, whether it's a right-hander or a left-hander, and then I think they're going to decide whether if it's a right-hander, I think it's going to be Marsh in left field. And believe it or not, if it's a left-hander, a tough lefty, you may see Weston Wilson out there in left field. That's a possibility. Ruby. Uh, but I think, yeah, go ahead. No, no, go, finish your, go ahead. Um, I, I, I just think that that um, provides probably the best defense um, that this, this, you know, combination of defense and offense that, um, that this lineup would have. That's uh, just my feeling. I don't, you know, again, Rob Thompson, he's the one pulling the strings, man, and he, he keeps pulling the right ones every every time. This is true. Uh, Craig Kimball tonight, a lot of fastballs. Uh, the fastball command, it was an overpowering fastball. Maybe this little bit of rest is going to help him out moving in the playoffs because they're going to need him. Yeah, no question about it. I mean, I did like some 97s today, and then he was throwing that fastball, not just like the 95 that's that's kind of flat. It was the 95-96 the, the that had some rise to it, some finish. You know, you, you carry, what, 28 in the postseason. What are you thinking? 26. No, I think you, you, you 26, yeah. Um, I'm not sure. I think most of those guys are going to be on the club there. Um, 
Um, it, the question is whether or not they're going to go with 14 uh, position players or 13 position players. And I think it'll depend on whether it's the Arizona Diamondbacks or the Marlins that they have to play. And it looks like it's it's getting closer and closer being the Marlins. Now, the Marlins have a ton of left-handers in their bullpen who have thrown very well. So you may very well. I mean, that Weston Wilson, that right-handed bat may become more important. I do believe that Christian Pache is going to be on that. Uh, on the club as well because he provides some speed and some defense, which I think they may want. Um, but again, you know, these are things that I, I'm sure Dave Dombrowski and uh, the coaching staff, Rob Thompson and Sam Fold are working through. And uh, I guess they're just sort of waiting to see who they're going to play. And then they'll make the uh, decisions accordingly. From Dave Dombrowski to Rob Thompson, to the players, they'll say it doesn't make a difference. We'll, we'll take on all comers. Who do you think would be better or best for the Phillies to play in round one? Well, whichever team I think does not have the the the, the uh, starting pitching ready. Now, uh, Zach Gallen and uh, Merrill Kelly, pretty good uh, duo for Arizona. Uh, I think the Kelly's Marlins, going tonight. Uh, Kelly's Kelly yeah. went tonight. They're losing one nothing in the eighth. eighth. Right, so he may not even be available. Who knows whether these guys are going to be able to come back and, you know, short rest and that sort of thing. Um, I don't know. I think, to me, they just have to play good baseball. If uh, if I had a choice, I'd probably rather play the Arizona Diamondbacks just because they're a younger team. Um, and there's just, for some reason, I just think there's too much familiarity. And, and actually, the Marlins have played pretty well against the Phillies. And they've, they've beaten them in the season series. So I think the Phillies are a better ball club. But in a short series like that, you just never know. And things have, uh, crazy, crazy things have happened in this game, as we well know. Yeah. All right, Ruben, we thank you so much. We'll see you tomorrow for the finale of the reg regular season. And, of course, on Tuesday... When the playoffs get started up, looking forward to that. Ruben Amaro Jr. in Queens. Uh, as it stands right now, by the way, we'll give you Red yeah, October. Guys. All right, Ruben. Uh, the Red October preview brought to you by your local Tri-State Toyota dealers. And here is a look at the wild card standings up to the moment with the Marlins and Diamondbacks even up. However, the Diamondbacks are losing 1-0 in the eighth inning right now to the Astros. If that happens, the Marlins' magic number to clinch the number two wild card spot will go to one. It currently is two. It would go to one with a Diamondbacks loss, and then uh, the Marlins' magic number, uh, they could win it with a, with a win tomorrow or a Diamondbacks loss. So we shall see. Do you agree with Ruben that it would be best for the Phillies to take on the Diamondbacks? Well, there's not that familiarity. And, and when you really think about it, the, the, the Marlins aren't going to be afraid of you. You see them enough during the season. And they know what to expect when they come in here. They've been in here enough. Um, so, yeah, I th I, I, especially right now, considering Gallon threw on Friday and Merrill Kelly's thrown tonight, I think you, you might get, what, uh, Gallon in game two? Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I, I think, I think it would be two. a little bit more beneficial uh, for them to play Arizona right now. Does the familiarity that. aspect, Ben, kind of wash away because it's the playoffs now? You know, everybody's even up. It doesn't make a difference who had a better record. And uh, and sometimes that provides a little bit of a distance between the teams that are so familiar through the regular season. Yeah, I think so. I think you got to wipe the slate clean and just and start anew. I think that's the way you have to look at it because it, it is a different animal. And them coming into this building over at CBP, it's going to be completely different from anything they've experienced during the regular season. Yes, you are familiar with the bullpens and things like that, uh, but I just still think that, that the, the Phillies are the team to beat. I, I think that. I, I believe that wholeheartedly. And I think, uh, yes, they are familiar with the Marlins, but there's just some weapons, I think, right now. The Diamondbacks, they have not swung the bats very well in this uh, past week. That's why you're starting to see their numbers start to decline. But I still think they have it in there a little bit. I think they have a little bit more experience and – uh, they have some guys that, that scare me a little bit. And they have good numbers against the Phillies. It seemed to be a certainty 
that the Phillies would win 90 games this season. It has eluded them now for four games. They got one more shot. They got one more shot. Relax yourself. I, I am relaxed, but it would be, I know it, again, it doesn't make a difference. If you're having a parade with 89 wins, that's all good. But 90 wins are a I few don't... Phillies teams, uh, certainly over the last 40 years. How, what is it, Sean Kane? It going Just back, six teams. Only happens it, six times. Yeah. And seven four of those be, made it to the World Series. Yeah. yeah. If it, you go back to 80, that's seven. Go but ahead. I mean, does it really matter? Is it really, is it really get, you know, grabbing you that much? No. That 90 wins? Not, that, I'm at, because the I'm reason, why, well, the reason why I'm saying that it's not obviously not affecting the team. Because if 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 that was that big of a deal, if if winning 90 games was this huge momentum swinger for the Phillies, they wouldn't have played the way they did today in either game. They would have played. They would have had different pitchers on the mound. They would have been going at teams, yeah. not yeah. kind of playing around teams. If you had a, a parade going down Broad Street and you interview one of the players, and say, "How's this feel? <laughs> it feels great, but we only won 89 in the regular season." Yeah, I don't think yeah. that's going to come. Or, or go back to 2011. <laughs> no, thank you. But go back to 2011 and 102 wins in a first yeah, round. Yeah, how'd that go? Exit. It did not go too well with 102 wins. What's Rob Thompson think about his team's status with one game remaining in the regular season? Season. Here he is in Queens. Right. Good. He probably won't play tomorrow, just out of precaution, but um, he's going to be fine. Just kind of caught a little bit of his tricep. And just just kind of missed the, missed the pad. Yeah. So which, which usually is what happens. <laughs> he's a bigger pad. Yeah. So he'll be good by Tuesday? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he'll be fine. He, he could probably play tomorrow. Okay. I'm just pulled them off. Pitching wise, just how did you think things went today in terms of what you wanted? As good as I could expect. I mean, Taiwan gave us a great start in the first game. Um, we used up Ortiz, which saved everybody for the second game. Um, you know, Plasmeyer, he, he laid on the sword for us, you know, and, and in a normal game, I, I wouldn't have left him out there for that long, but. Um, we used exactly the people that, that we needed to use today. So it, it all worked out good. What did you think of Kirkern? Uh, started off a little slow, but then he found it. He found his command of the slider, and, um, and, and the stuff was really good. You know, and it was good to see him work out of a kind of a jam there and went punch out, punch out, ground ball, first three guys in the lineup. So that's good to see. Are you encouraged by how quickly he can kind of like stop a rally from unfolding? I am. You know, his, his, his poise and focus maintains, and he just bears down, and, um, you know, he's he's pretty uh, calm character out there. And that's against the top of the order, I think, there. Yeah. Does yeah. that tell you anything? Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, you can get uh, the top of the order hitters out. <laughs> you know, he's pretty good. Sanchez, you would Pretty quick. Yeah. Anything for him? Yeah. I mean, yeah, do you like that look? Can you make anything out of it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, coming out of the bullpen didn't seem to bother him. Of course, he's done it before, so. Um, but yeah, he was just out there throwing strikes, just like he no normally would as a starter. I know you've been asked this many times, but could you uh, tell me how valuable Schwalber has been for you? Uh, unbelievable. You know, he's he's. Uh, he's probably not going to get to the um, franchise record for walks in the season, but his on base, his slug, you know, what's he got 47 now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, he's just, and, and what he does in the clubhouse, uh, the entire package is just um, really a, a big presence, um, not only on the field, but in the clubhouse. And he's, he's really something. With Sanchez, if you use him as a reliever in the playoffs, I mean, with the changeup, is he a guy that you would use against hitters from both sides? Sure. Yeah, because he can get both sides out. Yeah, change up is kind of a neutralizer on those right hand hitters. Talking about Rob Thompson, talking about his team, uh, and in particular, Kyle Schwarber. Christopher Sanchez at the end of his availability. Let's take it one at a time. He said Christopher Sanchez, he liked him coming out of the bullpen. Of course, he said he's done it before, but he felt very comfortable with what he did. Well, I think he feels comfortable because he's got some innings under his belt now, too. And I, I will say this much. I've never seen a guy swing at a pitch that was three feet outside, and he threw a changeup today that ended up 
two and a half, three feet out off the outside part of the plate for a strikeout. I mean, he's fooling, fooling guys. He's got tremendous movement on his pitches. I wouldn't be afraid to throw him against the lefty or a righty. Mm -hmm. You didn't watch me hit you. enough. I did that many times. <laughs> <laughs> Not that bad. Not that bad. And then Kyle Schwarber, he said, the guy's unbelievable. He said, probably not going to get the franchise record for walks in a season, but the entire package is really a big presence, not only on the field, but in the clubhouse. He's really something, said Rob Thompson. Yeah, you can't put a price on it. Having those guys in the clubhouse, knowing you know, there's a go-to guy you can go to, especially if you're a younger guy on the ball club sometimes you feel intimidated Kyle Swerver is one of those guys that puts that to rest and just makes everybody feel so comfortable what you see is what you get he is about as most genuine human being as I've ever met in my life he's sincere he gets it he wants to win he wants his teammates to do better and he puts a lot of a lot of on a lot of onus on himself to be that guy and boy it comes out he's I mean, 47 home runs and 104 RBIs I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I don't care that he's hitting 197. Yeah. I never thought I would be that guy to say that, but uh, nine, 47 and 104 speak for themselves. And all the runs that he scored and the walks, uh, he's a machine. I think most people have jumped on that same bandwagon that I could care less, you know, what, what he does hitting-wise. As long as that ball's flying out of the ballpark, that's all I care about. Yeah, and by the way, it does fly out of the ballpark. It doesn't just skim out yeah, of the ballpark. Yeah, he's not a cheapie. They, they, he's not a cheapie. They just go boom, and they end up in the upper deck or way deep into the stands. So take, take a quick timeout. 